2K fam, welcome to the NBA 2K League's The Post Up. I'm Autumn Johnson alongside my co-host Dirk, and we're coming at you every week to catch you up and give you the inside scoop of what's happening in the NBA 2K League. The first three weeks of the 3v3 Slam Open Tournament certainly did not disappoint. Now it's time for our players to return to the circle stage and battle it out for that first tournament title of the 2023 season. We're in DC for the fourth and final week of the 3v3 Slam Open. But before we get to that, let's run it back and see how we got here. Dirk, remote bracket play had some key moments that affected who's on the circle stage this week. So talk us through it. The first play this week comes from Cooks, obviously, in a Bucks game as he hits a massive three to tie things up against Xset. Uh, Dossix gets right back in front of him. Three seconds away, Johnny Red with the steal. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. And look at this. We are just a three away from a tie ball game. Can the Bucks do it? Cooks, Neff playing up high. Get some space, fading away from Cooks, Iverson oh. knocks it down. The player of the week from our second week did not disappoint. What a shot, but Cooks Iverson isn't done yet. And number two this week, we got Cooks again. Same matchup, same series, but this one officially gives Bucks Gaming the lead down the stretch. Misses the shot. They go fast on the break. It's not only shoot over to the corner. Neff, this is for the ball game. And he misses. Over to Cooks. Can he get the three? Can Cooks get the three? He does. He greets it. I'm still mind blown at this composure that we are seeing from Cooks and Bucks team, especially taking on a community giant like Xset. But third up, we got Tate, former NBA 2K League pro, seeming to go on a little revenge tour here at the 3v3 Slam Open. Another chance at this for team handles. 38 sets the screen. 38 slips down on CB. Tate trying to get some space up top. Stop and go! And team handles! They climbed Mount Everest in a grueling game five. Warriors gaming squad down to the lower bracket. Tate out there showing why he should have been picked, completely dismantling Warriors gaming squad and sending them down to that lower bracket. And last up, we got none other than the hot rookie Kai of Heat Check Gaming with one of the cleanest fadeaway shots you are going to see all year long. They close out. But there's, there's, there's no I, way. I, Derek, this is what the Gen G score it was. Do not. Nah, don't do it. Do it. Oh. Don't do it. Oh. He's see, see, there we go. <laughs> Man, Kai's doing things that we really haven't seen at the guard position so far here in threes. My goodness, what a shot. And what an amazing week it's been to close out remote bracket play. But before we head to our home at District E this week, let's go over to Autumn Johnson to find out what's new in the 2K. Thanks, Dirk. All right, let's talk about what's new in the 2K League. This past Friday, Monumental Sports and Entertainment hosted a press conference to officially kick off the grand opening of the 2023 Home for the NBA 2K League, District E. So what can you tell us before we step into our new home? I mean, this is huge autumn and dare I say monumental, but um, tis. Of course, Monumental Sports has always been phenomenal with Wizards District Gaming, all the things that they've been able to provide to the league. And now we're able to call District E our home for the 2023 NBA 2K League season. I absolutely love it. And who, of course, would be there to represent the NBA 2K League? Uh, none other than our guy, Brendan Donahue, the president of the league, to go out there. And this is going to be the first organization to actually utilize this District E space. And I think that makes it even a little bit more special, Autumn, the fact that we are going to be the first ones to take over this entire venue and set the tone for future esports events that might go into District E at a later date. And of course, I had a chance to check out District E before anybody else got in, Autumn. And trust me when I say this, this season is going to be like none other than before with this brand new setup. I'm excited. Oh, I'm excited for our players to display their elite talent on the signature circle stage. And we expect the gameplay to turn up. And you already know our players are going to talk that talk heading into the final week of the Coinbase 3v3 Slam Open. You heard that correctly. We are already coming to a close on our first 3v3 tournament of the 2023 season. After the Slam Open, we got the Switch Open, then the Steal, and wrap up with the 3v3 Finals. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the 3v3 portion of our 2023 season. Dirk, this is going to be a very special ride. 
Yeah, Autumn, it's always amazing uh, when we have a central market like out there in D.C. Not only do we have teams that are actually in D.C. competing all season long, but we also have some coming from their home bases flying into D.C. for to play for these $150,000 prize pools. And I think that's special enough. But Autumn, you were there with us in season two. I remember the season one vibes when we had every single person in market it, it was unmatched energy. There was just something that was always in the air. People that you have maybe gamed with for years and years, finally getting out there in person. You got, you got different hobbies. Maybe you want to go see the White House. Maybe you want to go play some hoops. The options are endless out there in D.C. for these guys, so I cannot wait. I can't agree even more with you. In the first week of the bracket play, set the tone for what's to come as we enter the final week of the Slam Open. The quest for the chip continues and you can feel the tension begin to rise as our teams approach District E. After the break, we tap into the impact basketball has made on some of our 2K League pros. Plus, we sit down with Lord Beezus from Dukes Infinitos to share his journey throughout the league. Hang tight. the post up i'm autumn johnson joined by my co-host dirk and you know being a part of the team on the court is important but it's just as important to be a team off the sticks wilson helps our players and teams find new ways to bond and build that chemistry that helps us understand what it truly means to be bonded by ball During the offseason, we talked a lot. We were excited to meet each other. Like, we all trust each other. We just laugh, tell jokes all the time. Yeah. Jaden, super active, funny. Hey, DJ's always going to be DJ. He's always keeping the team vibes up. You know, he's a leader by example. Everybody on the team got their own little bit of swag. We like to hoop in real life and make sure we have each other's backs. Jerry, and he's super professional. Jerry's one of the structured guys that you need to have on your team. Thanks, dude. Jaden's always joking, getting on people. He's got real high energy. I love competing, but uh, the best part is for my guys to go out to eat, play ball with them. In basketball, I feel like we really get closer as a team. You need everybody on the court. Perry is like humble, but he's like a little bit of an assassin. Thanks, Ben. Moving from a different country, I thought it was going to take time to adjust, but my teammates have been very welcoming, and it's like a new family in a different country. The two rookies, Laura and I, were kind of more quiet, but he's a cool dude. Team chemistry so far, so good. We all really mesh together. We go out all the time. We're on a tour, go see the White House, see all around DC. I feel like basketball helps us bond as a team. Can't wait to see what we do this season. Zerg, I can speak from experience that successful teams are the ones who have chemistry and gel together off court. I mean, it's the secret sauce to a winning formula when you're battling with your teammates. Oh, 100% automated. The chemistry was the biggest part when I used to compete and go out there and play the vibes after we got off the court. And of course, our stellar broadcast team. Vibes are always immaculate. You can say that we're almost bonded by ball. But what you see in a lot of these videos and behind the scenes are really a reflection of what the players are going through once they step out on that stage. Absolutely. And being on a team means that everyone has the responsibility to lead and step up for one another. And Lord Beezus is a fifth year vet and is currently in his second year with Dukes Infinitos. He is here joining us today to share more about his career, his leadership and team. Lord Beezus, thank you so much for making the time to join us here on The Post Up. Appreciate you guys having me on, Autumn and Dirk. It's a pleasure. Dukes Infinito started out the season incredibly strong, holding on to those top seats for a large chunk of the 3v3 Slam Open. What can you credit your early success to? Um, I would just say we have five guys with, with great three versus three experience uh, who've all just, you know, played at a high level. We've got our rookie, uh, Loki Godlike, who last year made a good playoff run with uh, Rim Runners. And then our coach, obviously, Juice, uh, he was coaching Loki. So I would just say experience. And then you got Vandy, who played with Pacers Gaming last year and won a banner. 
And then you've got, you know, Hez, our lock, who also played 303 and comes from that stage community. So we just have five guys who are experienced and just ready to compete. Is there anything you learned in the 3v3 Slam Open that you guys are applying in the upcoming Switch and still tournaments? Yeah, basically just, you know, after these games, it's just a different game than last year. So this year, it's, it's making sure you capitalize on those stops. Uh, when you get a stop, you, you need to make sure you score. Like, that's the biggest thing that I've noticed is capitalizing on those points because those points add up and they, they change games. Can you share a little bit about this year's 3v3 strategy? How does that translate to the 5v5 series that we're going to have coming later this season? Yeah, so for us, I mean, uh, you know, these series can go by very quickly, so it's composure. I mean, you can get down in this, maybe 2-0 in a series, but, you know, never give up, obviously. Uh, these games are for the taking, and a lot of people, you know, mistakes are made, so it's capitalizing on those mistakes, and for us, it's just staying composed. That's our biggest thing, staying composed and capitalizing on our stops. Talk to us a little bit about the offseason. This is your second year with Dukes. Who's new to the team? How has the addition of new teammates affected the team dynamic, if at all? Yeah, so we've got three new teammates. Uh, me and Killy uh, stayed from last year, who were part of the, our three-on-three -three team and a part of our three-on-three -three run. So uh, now we've got Bandy, who's a five-year vet in the league as well. Uh, we brought in Hez, who played with Gen G last year at, at our lockdown. And then we brought in the rookie, Loki Godlike, who was considered an amateur last year because he had a good 3-on-3 uh, three -three run and made the playoffs, actually, with rim runners. We have a good team dynamic, and everybody feels comfortable in talking with one another. We express ourselves, so I like that. We don't really hold our tongue, so and everybody's able to take it and not be sensitive about it. So that's one good thing I think we have going for our team. So I would say we have a strong dynamic as far as our team, and then, you know, it's a good thing because we've got guys from all different ages and a lot of young guys as well. So... It's, it's a good fit right now. And I know you're not the one to necessarily hold your tongue when it comes to the stage. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's just kind of who I am and my character. Uh, I don't look to hurt feelings or anything like that. For me, it's always constructive criticism. And I want the same kind of, you know, uh, feedback. You know, if someone feels some kind of way about me, if there's something I can improve or do better, please, like, speak your mind. Like, and my feelings don't hurt. And if anything, I'm trying to be the best me I can be to, you know, help us compete and make this money. So, yeah. I'm sure some of your newer teammates look up to you as a leader amongst the team. How does that responsibility and expectation feel? I, uh, I fully embrace that role just as a, as a vet in this league. And I, you know, I always want my team to feel like if there's something they want to come to me about, advice off the game, on the game, I want to be here for them. Uh, I look to build a family, and I know everybody kind of says that, but for me, that's big. Comfortability is everything on this game, and just having that, like like I tell people all the time, like everybody has the stick skill for the most part. Like, you're not gonna be in this league and just don't know how to play the game, you know what I'm saying? So having that mentality right is literally 80% of this, and that's how you endure the long, the hardships and overcome things, and that's how you're gonna win in this league. Being able to endure the mental struggles and the long, sometimes practice isn't going your way or you're not, you're not feeling that great, but if you're able to get over those things and just see things for what they are, that's, that's how you win and become, you know, have longevity in this league. What are you personally looking forward to this year and beyond? Uh, for this year, I mean, honestly, we want to create history with Dukes. Uh, we felt like we left a lot of money on the table last year, and threes especially, so we want to correct our wrongs and, you know, whether that's win a banner or preferably bring home the three versus three championship, uh, we definitely want to do that. Uh, for fives, we had we started off good, so I mean, uh, this year we want to try to just improve on that and see if we can get in there and sneak a playoff spot in. We definitely feel like we have the talent and the experience, and we brought in three new guys who are hungry, so we're just looking to surprise a lot of people. We're not really worried about people's opinions. We just, all we can do is worry about us and perform. Laura Beezus, again, thank you for your time and for joining us here on The Post Up. Best of luck to you and Dukes Infinitos as you guys continue on in the 2023 season. Thank you guys again for having me on, Autumn and Dirk. I appreciate y'all. Take care. While the slam may not have ended the way they like, there are more opportunities for Dukes to step up and make some noise going into the switch and the steel open. Listen on them, upsets happen all the time. It is March for a reason, and that's the beauty of this game. There's never just one underdog or a favorite, but the amazing thing, there's an opportunity to win it all is still available going down the line. There are many different coaching styles in this league, some maybe even a little bit unorthodox. We caught up with the coaches of our league to talk about how they approach coaching their teams.
What are we going to see from my team this year? I think we're going to see a lot of good ball, right? We got these uh, two young players, uh, Loki and Hez, uh, but we've also got Bees, Killy, Vandy. Uh, so I think we've got a good mix of players and a good mix of talent at the same time. You're going to see a, a team that just have each other's back and just want to compete every single day, compete for a championship. This year for my team, you're going to see a team that's going to compete in threes and fives. I'm um, going to give us our all from beginning to end. We're definitely going to build on what we did last year, but also work on improving and using a couple of different lineups to show that last year wasn't just a fluke, that we're very versatile and that we're going to continue to improve in this mode and, and in fives. I love what head coach Dewan there said for Pistons GC. They're out to prove that last year was not a fluke by any means, and they look good as we are going to be seeing them in District E. And of course, whenever you win a championship, you have this huge target on your back, but you can't get the job done without getting some new additions coming that draft. And the main one that we're focusing on is Connor. He's filling that void of not having finals MVP Ramo out there with the shooting ability, with the defense on him. They look great. Couldn't agree more, Dirk. We still have a lot of 2K to be played throughout the rest of the 2023 season, and our coaches believe their teams have what it takes to be crowned a champion. Without a doubt, Autumn, not only do these players have something to prove every single time that they pick up the controller, but the coaches do as well. It's an all-around effort to perform at an elite level, and it's only a matter of time before one of them is hoisting up that trophy. We are entering the final week of our first 3v3 tournament and it's still anyone's game. Coming up after this break, we jump into the current bracket play breakdown for the 3v3 Slam Open and hear from some of our amateur stars. Stay with us. K leagues the post up. I'm Autumn Johnson with my guy Dirk, and week four means the end of the slam open. Let's see how our teams stack up as they play through the bracket. Hey, going into week four, bracket play for the 3 3 slam open is heating up, but before we move forward, we have to talk about how we end up getting into this position. We had double elimination in the NBA 2K League for the first time, and because of that, if you lost there in the upper bracket, you get another chance at life in the lower bracket, and this bracket was stacked. 32 teams that were competing are NBA 2K League teams on top of eight amateur teams, which you're maybe wondering, how did we get the eight amateur teams there? There was a 16 amateur team closed qualifier. The eight that ended up going through get a chance to go forward to bracket play, to play for that money and try to take the NBA 2K League pros bags. All in all, this is the first time of its kind in the NBA 2K League with this much money on the line. Now, Dirk, the thing that surprised me the most was that some of our amateur teams were taking down our professional teams in the NBA 2K League. It's exciting enough that you get to go out there, play against the NBA 2K League pros, but it's all about winning that money and taking it away from our pros. But also, can you just imagine I swing up Bear to Beast and all of a sudden you find yourself on a poster with him being on the floor? That's what it's all about, Autumn. Whew, I can't even imagine. And speaking of coming into the league, we talk about the pros a lot, but these amateurs are making a lot of noise too. Let's hop on the bullet train. Next stop, G1 Longhorns. A tournament like last night, I'm not gonna lie, it's the biggest tournament I've ever been in, 150K on the line. Now, the mind state of being in that tournament is tough because, you know, you can't make mistakes. You know, all the pressure is on you, but at the same time, the pressure is on the professionals. It's just like so much at stake. And I come from an environment where, you know, I play football very competitively. So um, I'm, I'm like kind of ready for these moments because I know how hard everybody's working and I know how important these plays and these games are. So I know what's at stake. And I know that right now by beating, by defeating, you know, these professionals, I'm taking their spot as a non-professional. The reality is that a lot of people out there, including myself, you know, are very underrated. I'm going to talk my talk and then I'm going to back it up. That's what it's all about too. Entertainment, you know. That man, Bullet's energy is different. When I tell you that he is one of the biggest content creators in the NBA 2K space right now, the man was playing in his debut with 2,000 live viewers just on his stream 
on top of what we had in the NBA 2K League stream, but it doesn't just end there. The man is full of swag with his gameplay and the trash talk. As soon as he won his series, he grabbed the webcam and started pointing it over to the chat to talk trash, to show what his chat was saying out there to the entire world, but his confidence at an all-time high, and of course, why wouldn't it be? You are going out there playing in front of that many people on a daily basis, Autumn. He is league ready. You love to see it. You got to have that dog in you for sure. And our amateur players are proving they belong on the main stage as they are showing out during the 3v3 slam open. After the break, our two K League pros reveal some of their go-to rituals before games. Don't go anywhere. Up. I'm Autumn Johnson here alongside my guy Dirk and it's time to get pumped. Every player has their own thing they do to get right for their big games. From what I heard, our 2K League teams dedicate just as much energy to the pregame rituals as they do the actual game. Um, my pregame ritual, I like to drink ginger shots. I usually drink them before the game because you, you drink it, that ginger hits your chest and give you that little mm. Before every game day, I, I go to the gym. Like, I have to. Like, or else, like, I feel like I'm gonna play terrible or, like, lose. A 15 to 20 minute power nap before every game. A lot of people have seen but really don't realize is obviously the shades. Everything's like darker, it's like zero dark 30 mode. Everything's ready to lock in and get to going. I bring my speaker, you know, to the facility and uh, ask the guys any song requests you guys want right before again, get them going, because not just, you know, all the songs I like, I want them to get going too. For nights when I'm commentating, my pregame ritual is simple. I want to go to the chair that I'm commentating from. I just want to sit back and relax an hour before the show. Autumn, what's yours? Ooh, well, when I used to hoop, I had a pickle before every single game. But now that I'm retired and broadcasting, I usually just call my mom before games. Yeah, we're not going to let that slide. We're going to dive more in depth with the pickle saga at some point in the future. But this is the week we are now in District E, closing out the Coinbase 3v3 Slam Open. Tune in every week to hear about the latest and most up-to-date information in the NBA 2K League. For now, I'm Dirk. That's Autumn. And from our cast and crew, until next time, 2K fans.